Back in 2004, November 2004, I posted uh, to my then blog, Learn, on, Learn Online, or it was actually called Teach and Learn Online back then, <coughs> a post called All You Need to Teach Online. And I went through a list of uh, software packages that were available at the time and becoming popular. Uh, OpenOffice, um, Mozilla Firefox, M Thunderbird for email, Yahoo Groups and GeoCities for file uh, sharing and uh, Blogger. Well, uh, things have come a long way since then, obviously. Uh, but what I have noticed, thanks to a comment from um, Lanny after right. that post and was wondering how I would update it, and it prompted me to think, yeah, why haven't I updated that sort of six years on? And um, so this is it. And I'm thinking to do this in a series of screencasts. Um, and this one, uh, all of them will be well under 10 minutes each. But this one being the introduction to that. And there's a basic principle underlying, I think, what I look for uh, when when choosing you know tools to where I can say everything you need to teach and learn online and uh, I'm just currently looking for that post now sorry for the scrolling here but basically it's um, autonomy here it is the post dependence independence and interdependence is when I go looking for a tool or when I choose to use a tool I think about it in terms of independence or autonomy from an institution so if you've come across this uh, video or series of videos by the title Everything You Need to Teach and Learn Online, thinking that this will help you with your teaching in a school or a college or a university or help you if you're learning there, then that's not necessarily so. This, these uh, recordings will be for people who are teaching and learning predominantly outside such institutions. So there won't be any advice on how to use Moodle or Blackboard or how to use the student management system and um, things like that. This will be to, uh, a range of tools that you can freely and easily access now uh, and start using for an educational purpose, whether it be teaching and or learning. And so this is probably more of interest to those who are interested in independently teaching and independently learning. But I work inside an institution and uh, although there's certainly all sorts of subtle and not so subtle pressures to use the systems that are provided by that institution, the email systems, the learning management systems, the student management systems, uh, etc. Soon there'll be blogging systems internal and things like that. I uh, actively resist using those because I think when you start using those you become dependent on the institution. So f easy example is if I start using the institution's email three years later I'm very dependent on that email system because my network has been built on it and if I was to move on or go somewhere else uh, then it would be difficult for me to take that network whereas if I come in and I'm using my own email system set up professionally um, then it's easy to migrate around different institutions. And the same can be said from a student perspective. If I use my email um, when I come in as a student, and I use my own blog, etc., then all of that material that I gathered and contributed and assignments and stuff is uh, more or less managed by myself. And I'm not, um, I'm not uh, compromised by the learning management system unenrolling me and closing my access to it or having to make some sort of backup of everything that I'd put into that. And then if I'm a teacher, uh, I would look to produce my educational materials um, on platforms independent from the institution. That's not to say that links back and recognition and even branding of the institution doesn't take place, quite the opposite. We, we do do that. But it's to say that the resources are out there on the open internet so that if I was to start teaching for another organization or for myself, then the resources are there as well as if I was teaching inside an institution, the resources are there. Count to that if I was to build the resources in a learning management system, then I'm dependent on that institution's ability to maintain that learning man management system and that policies don't change where that would restrict me and others from accessing it. 
a lot of people criticise this approach as being, um, well, you just you just pass your ind- you pass your dependence onto uh, services like Google and Yahoo and um, and uh, places like that, and that's true. But I look at them as much bigger entities that are motivated by much clearer goals, being profit, um, that I can understand and uh, and predict in some ways. And with them come vast networks that are beneficial. Uh, to me, publishing educational materials out there puts me in touch with other teachers working in the same field, etc. So I'm likely, more likely to, I suppose, trust the service provision of Google than the service provision of an institution struggling to keep money and resources to those services. And it gets very contentious, all of this attitude. But I think there is value in operating as an independent or autonomous entity within an institution, particularly the younger generations coming up and particularly the students who their relationship with that institution will probably be less than three or four years as we move around careers these days. So these tools and selections of tools and the way we use them are for that on that premise. But what well, over the next few days, I plan to do a series of video recordings and blog posts to support the videos that go through the tools that I would use these days and have used, um, reviewing them, looking at their features, and reflecting somewhat on their limitations and uh, and problems, and perhaps commenting on how they can review how they can replace uh, some of the systems that are commonly used even inside institutions. So it's a blog, uh, video blog, and blog post to update the 2004 post. And it'll be interesting to see how it compares.